What is up, everybody? The Hunter GT with thehuntergt.com. That's right. Go check out the website. What is going on today? The Time Ranger Pro is what's going on. Brand new addition to the Bounty Hunter lineup. Wait a minute, Hunter GT. You already reviewed the Time Ranger. You're right. I did. That was the original Time Ranger, the 6.6 .6 kilohertz Bounty Hunter, a quirky detector, all sorts of buttons and fiddly features on it. No, no. This is the Time Ranger Pro. Completely different detector. Bringing it up to the modern era, I'm, I'm quite happy the Bounty Hunter is showing, First Texas, I should say, is showing some love to the Bounty Hunter lineup with this Time Ranger Pro. 19 kilohertz, 2.9 pounds, one 9-volt battery, runs at about 15 to 20 hours. What do we got on it? Multiple audio and discrimination control features, advanced target separation, backlight, active ground, condition readout, padded armrest, Bounty Arc stand, Big, easy-to-read LCD display, target ID, depth display, battery condition, mode settings, menu settings, comfort grip, quarter-inch headphone jack, three-pole system with an aluminum stem that has an adjustable length for all ages and heights, 11-inch waterproof elliptical search coil, completely submersible in water, five-year limited warranty. Not two or three years like some companies, five-year warranty right there. Take a picture. Pause it right here. Look at all those features they slapped on the box here. FE tone, V brake, ground grabs clear down to salt. Are you kidding me? Ground balance all the way to salt. 19 kilohertz operation, ultra lightweight, 2.9 pounds. There's all the features right there. What do you say? We open this bad boy up, run it through the menu, run it through some testing phases like we always do here on these reviews, and check out this Time Ranger Pro. All right, we have it all laid out and opened up out of the box. We have the upper rod right here, the middle aluminum rod right there, and the lower plastic polycarbonate resin type rod. I don't know what you want to call it. Some people say, don't call it plastic country GT. It's a, it's a polymer polycarbonate type of something, or I, I don't know, man. I, I, it, it, it's plastic, bro. Chill out. I'm not saying it feels cheap or anything. It's, it is it is what it is. So here's your literature right here. The Bounty Hunter Time Ranger Pro Manual. Insert lower washers in the stem. Two rubber washers right there. If you look on the lower stem, they fit right in there. See those two little recessed circular holes? Rubber washers go right there. You are all set. Here is the arc stand right there. The foam padded grip for your for your forearm your forearms i hope you don't have forearms your forearm and it goes right here in one of these three graduated holes so you can run it a little bit forward middle or backwards one inch uh, distance between those so if you have shorter arms you want to run it right here if you're a little bit longer arm like me tall guy six feet you want to run it all the way in the back position right there so fully adjustable with the locking collars right here you see these little things they screw left to right tighten it up real good has one on the middle rod has one on the upper rod and then the holes there are graduated for the little metal prongy thing for how long you need it to be so pretty good pretty good let's check out the coil here the 11 inch dd coil here you see the coil bolt installed on it already look at that Look at that, a red bottom, I love it. Not that you are looking at the bottom very often, but I don't know, I like the red bottom on the coil. It makes it stand out a little bit, kind of cool. You know, the whole detector's not bright red. The whole detector's not bright yellow. It's not some bright color. Where do they put it? Well, they give you a little color love on the bottom of the coil. I kind of dig that, I kind of dig that. A little artsy fartsy, but not so that it's blowing your eyeballs out. It's on the bottom of the coil, something you don't see. It's hidden art. That's hidden art right there, ladies and gentlemen. And check out the face right here. I really like this face. Nice blue silver graphics on it. Nice little, like, it's almost like a, a carbon fiber type blue print to it. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Menu, GG button, plus, minus. Nice tactile feel to it. Pinpoint button. Let's listen to this. Nice clicky clicky knobs here. They feel really good. Man, it's built nice. Everything from Bounty Hunter... Fisher, Technetics, that's one thing you can always say about them. They, they, they feel really nice. They don't feel cheap or hollow, anything like that. You, you always feel like you have a quality product. One 9-volt battery right there in the back, 15 to 20 hours right there. And you can see the date code, 0320. That means it's a March 1920. The first four digits of your serial number are always the date code, 0320, March 2020. 
brand new Time Ranger Pro, basically. A couple months old here. Um, I've had it in my possession for almost a month now before reviewing it. So there it is. It looks great. It feels great. Quarter inch headphone adapter right there. The little dust cover on it. Two screws right here on the bottom. They are going to fit right in the top there of your foam grip. Right on the top of the foam S-handle grip. You just slide them right through the bottom. And then they protrude through the top. And then they go right in there. So you have to remove them. Slide them in. It, follow the manual, ladies and gentlemen. Follow the manual. Without further ado... What do you say you shut your face, the Hunter GT? Let's assemble this bad boy up, run it through the menu, check out the features, run it through some testing, and check out this Time Ranger Pro. All right, here we go. We run through the menu here. Not too much to it. Pretty easy detector to set up and cycle through. So we have our power gain meter here over on the left. We just click it, cycles through the serial code. Now the first four digits. 0320, that's going to be the date code. So this is a March 2020 model right here. And then once it boots up, there you go. We're ready to go. And we can adjust this all the way up to 100. You see the gain bottom right there where it says gain right here. It's at 100. And then we can take it all the way down. We'll just leave it down at 1 for the sake of the video here. Right hand side here, we have disc mode. It is in disc mode when it is all the way down. If we click it, now we are in all metal mode, all right? And this is our threshold. We can listen to the threshold here. Right about there is good. Super smooth, super smooth threshold. Listen, to, and I'm indoors right now. Computer running, fan running, LED lights running. Super nice, smooth threshold. Very, very good. So we click it back down to disc mode. And you can see right there, it does say disc. And when we click it up, it will say ground phase, ground balance. We have our FE tone down there on the bottom left. Signal right here on the bottom left when we are in disc mode. Target ID in the middle on disc mode. When we are in all metal mode, it is not target ID in the middle. It is your ground phase, your ground balance. You try to match that number with this one, basically, whatever you're ground balanced at. So you're going to have to look at the conductivity scale. You're going to see a little marker up in here when you're in all metal mode. When you're in disc mode, it's going to give you the ID right here. 0 to 40. See how 40 is larger? That means iron ends right there. So 0 to 40 is your iron range. 40 to 100 is your non-ferrous range. Basically, your gold range will start in here. You'll have foil pull tabs and then your silver is going to copper silver is going to start right at 80 and above okay so let's cycle through the menu here we got plus minus menu gg for ground grab that's your uh, ground balance button and we have a pinpoint button right here so it's pretty easy you got your all metal click threshold and then click it down to disc and this is just off and on click with your gain over here on the left hand side so the two knobs are, are pretty easy if you want to factory reset it hold down the menu gg button while you turn it on and it will factory reset itself okay so let's turn it on here we're just going to cycle through the menu here on it real quick all right so let's start if we just hit plus or minus right now what is it doing it's changing the disc you see disc two so i can change it right there and you see the black band start to disappear Everything in black is going to be audible. Everything that is clear over here is going to be totally silent. Totally silent when you use discrimination like this, okay? So pretty easy to use a disc, just plus or minus. It is always going to be default. If you're outside of the menu, the plus and minus will be the discrimination option for you there. All right, so we'll take it all the way to zero. Hit menu GG, and it's gonna light up the light bulb right there. What does that do? It turns on the backlight. So there we go, we got a five, and we can take it all the way down to zero, which is off. So there is the nice backlight, pretty cool. Hit menu again, and we go down to volume, and it defaults at seven. We can go from zero, which is totally muted, up to one, two, three, all the way up to 20. Now this is adjustable FE, iron audio right here. So what I wanna show you is one, so zero is dead muted, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, any of the single digits, one through nine, are going to be ferrous and non-ferrous will be the same volume. So both ferrous, non-ferrous is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They will be the same audio level. When you hit 10, the first digit, the one, it's always gonna be level 10, will be your non-ferrous. 
and the zero of 10 is your iron audio is now muted, okay? So if I go down to volume now and go to 11, now my iron audio is as one, two. Now my iron audio is at a two, a three, a four, okay? So the second digit is gonna be my iron audio. So it doesn't have to blast out my ears with the bass tone or the, or the iron audio tone. I'll, I'll show it when we, when we go over the nail test here coming up, but that is the iron adjustable iron audio. So at 20, they're both max again, um, just like at level nine, basically. 20 and nine are, are, are pretty much the same. They're both max. So that is the iron audio, the volume adjustment, V-brake. Now the V-brake is going to decide, see how it's gray here? It's not totally cleared out like discrimination was, right? So no, no, no. With V-brake, that is your break for your tone. So all this gray stuff now is gonna be a low tone, a bass tone, a iron tone, and all the dark black is going to be your VCO tone, okay? And what we can do, we can set up our V-brake here, let's say, and then once it times out here, now watch, we can go set up a disc level. So now we have silence, we have a low tone, and then we have the high tone and the dark gray. So you can set it up in multiple different ways. And then if we go down one more from V-Brake, so V-Brake's pretty easy. Dark gray or dark black VCO tone, light gray bass tone. If there's blanked out, no tone. Okay, so it's pretty easy once you wrap your head around it. And then we have notch here, notch width start. I wish it would start with notch first, honestly. So notch width, let, let's put a notch width of say five. And then we go down to notch and see where our notch shows up here. So look, right here it's notched in because this is discriminated out. So it notches that five, it was five wide. So it notches it in and then we can cycle it anywhere we want and see now it's notched out. See how it's clear? In the gray section, we can move it all the way up into the black section here. And so that section is now totally blanked out. You cannot hear it. And look, you can notch it out clear up to 99 if you want to, something that is pretty cool. And then if we go back through to notch width, we can make it as wide as 20, okay? And then when we go down to notch, we can move that 20. That's as wide as you can get it right there is 20. And we can just move it anywhere we want along the scale by going left and right, just like that. Pretty pretty intuitive, pretty easy. Once you wrap your head around it, read the manual, watch the old video here, it's pretty easy to wrap your head around. So you can set it to where, you know, you got discriminated out. If you don't wanna listen to your iron, you can discriminate it out. You can set a, a low tone in here somewhere on the other side of nickels, so all your pull tabs are low tone with the V-brake. It's really intuitive. I usually run it, I run zero disc, I run my V-brake all the way up to 55. So everything 55 and lower is bass tone. And then 56, 57, 58, which is nickels, 59, 60 is all going to be a VCO tone. And then I notch out 60 to 80 where all the screw caps are. So I'm getting nickels. I'm getting all my silver copper range as a VCO tone. It's pretty intuitive the way you can set it up. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So if we hit menu again, we saw notch, notch width, and then that is it. We are done. We are down into discrimination mode again. And when we hit plus or minus, you see our disc meter is starting to move. So not much to it other than that. We got our pinpoint button right here that when we hold it down, we can see depth. It's showing 10 inches right now, nothing underneath the coil. Um, that will be in inches when you hold down the pinpoint button. So pretty easy. Two knobs, a few buttons, one button, just cycle through the menu here. You just keep tapping it to cycle through like that plus and minus to make your adjustments. Super intuitive, super easy. All right, we got it cranked up all the way to 100. Loving the red bottom here on the air test here. So we got three silvers, large, medium, small, some mid conductors here, large, medium, a nickel, small, a Indian head penny, which is the higher mid conductor range, almost into the high conductor range, right next to silver there, zinc range, uh, a small, 10K gold ring, a small eagle button right there, and a lead three ring bullet right there. So let's start off with the silver. We'll go big. Not really. 19 kilohertz. Don't expect it to do too much on silver. And we are out to 11. And we're still getting some whispers out to 12. 
So we're getting repeatable hits at 11. Let's go with the quarter. And we're getting hits out to 10. And it cuts off at 11. Dime. Good solid hits. 8, 9. And it's starting to fade off at 9. 10. We're still getting hits at 10, but not so sure you dig that. Um, let's try the little, little eagle button. And we're getting hits at 10, 11. Let's go with the large, oh, let's go with the bullet here, the bullet. Nine, ten on the bullet, and then we'll go with the ten K gold ring. It likes that plenty. Eleven, twelve. So it's getting that higher than the large silver. It's getting that higher than that large silver coin right there. It loves that gold range. Let's try the Indian head. Ten. Eh, breaking up at eleven. Nickel. Clear out to a foot on a nickel. We're getting repeatable hits. And listen to that modulation. Some of the best modulation there is on any detector, that VCO tone. Here we go, French sin time right here. And well past a foot. So as you can see, it's doing mid conductors much better than the high conductors. That makes sense since it is a 19 kilohertz machine. Let's go on, do some recovery speed, some nail test, all that good stuff. Can a bounty hunter be used for gold prospecting? No way, no way, right? There's a 0.3 gram picker. See how big it is compared to my finger there. There it is, pretty small little, I mean, average size picker. You, you'd be super happy to find that gold prospecting. Here is one that doesn't even register on my gram scale. It, on a grain scale it would for sure, but this is zero on my gram scale. It won't even read it. It is a sub gram picker so subgram 0.3 right here cranked all the way up i'm in disc mode look at that i'm not even in all metal i'm in discrimination mode and check this out lift it up i'm hitting it about four to five inches above it and you can hear the good modulation and look it's calling it 48 right above iron foil range Coil range. And then let's check this little one. It's reading iron to right above iron. It'll go 39, which is iron range, and then hit up into the 50 range, 40 range every once in a while. So you would definitely dig that. You would definitely dig that. And then let's switch over to all metal mode. Let's see if I can do it one finger, one handed. There we go, all metal mode. Let's listen now. Definitely. Definitely. And just to prove there's no tricks, no nonsense here, I'm gonna take them off. I'm gonna hold them in my hand and hopefully, hopefully don't drop them. And look, nothing, nothing. Right up on it, scraping it, None, nothing. No nonsense, no BS here. Super sensitive. A bounty hunter that can gold prospect. What do you think about that? All right, I got four dimes here, silver dimes, about, oh, coil width apart, roughly. So that is a true recovery speed test. Anything super close is separation test. I'm gonna be doing that in the nail board test, kill two birds with one stone right there. So right now I, want, I just want a recovery speed test. So coil width apart. 
If they get any closer, it's separation. While they both play into each other, they are separate tests, technically. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's about an average sweep right there. It's about how I sweep. So let's get a little stupid. As we can see, it's blazing fast. It, it, it's pretty darn fast. It's pretty darn fast. Let's move on to the nail test. Check out how it does in iron and separation. Sensitivity, recovery speed, so far, that's one heck of a bounty hunter. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. All right, so here we go. You can hear the iron. It wants to squeak through here. I got it right on the edge of the break point from where iron, where the nails are coming in from iron to the good tone. So it's right on the edge. But 99% of the time you can hear it's the iron tone. Let's put that down, Indian head penny right here. We're gonna place it right down in the number one spot, one Indian head penny. And let's see now if we can get a clear signal on that coin. Easy on number one. Let's try number two. No, it wants to. One pass. It does it does on that pass to the right. Let's try number three. Same thing. It wants to do one way. And then number four. No problem. So that's like what a three out of four, I guess. Um, you know, it's going one way here and there on some of them. Let's move that and make sure that nail is just perfectly lined up. There we go. Put it on that one. We'll try number one. Hitting it there. Try number two. Hits it one way again. Number three. No problem. And number four. I can cherry pick it. Only well, wants to go one way. So it's pat that's a pretty tough test, a side test right here. Tough test right there. So it, it's passing like let's say six of eight. It's passing about six of eight because it one way hits certain ones and it double hits all the rest So it doesn't fail any of them other than the one way hit if you want to call that a fail on a one way hit That's up to you. I'll leave it up to you. So Super sensitive machine super sensitive machine. We saw the air tests uh, pretty good on the mid-range conductors Pretty good on the silver as well for being 19 kilohertz We saw it hit the gold nugget the sub gram picker. We saw it hit the 0.3 gram picker there, so super sensitive on gold range being 19 kilohertz, very sensitive machine, very nice on those nickels, uh, those mid conductors, not too shabby in iron either, not bad at all. And I'll tell you what, the fringe depth ID on these 19 kilohertz machines from Bounty Hunter Fisher Technetics, they have some of the best ID on the fringe range that I've ever seen on any detector. They will keep that solid ID, even in bad mineralized soil, clear down to where the signal disappears. I've never really seen it on too many other detectors. It's pretty impressive. So there we go, guys. A bounty hunter that is decent in nails, very good on sensitivity, very good on recovery speed, very good on mid-conductors, and pretty darn good on silver as well. How about that? Bounty hunter getting some love. Time Ranger Pro, hope you enjoyed this review. Hope you enjoyed this video. The Hunter GT signing off. I will see you on the next video.